boom, 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 boom. And that's often how I start a recording so I can get a, an audio sync. But it's really appropriate for where I am today because this is RAF Barnum, a site previously used to store nuclear weapons. Uh, what a place. Uh, this building behind me is one of 57 that was used for the storing of nuclear core material in the, uh, the 1950s during the, uh, the Cold War of the Soviet Union and how appropriate it is right now. But I'm kind of back here, let's hope nothing ever comes of the kind of materials that were stored here. Right? There's also another link personally with me as well because my father, uh, sadly long since gone, was uh, an RAF serviceman and it was his plane his Vickers Valiant that dropped the H-bomb on Christmas Island. So uh, there's a, a, an awful lot of connection with this place, uh, one way or another, although this place I don't think actually uh, was associated with the bomb that was dropped on Christmas Island. I may be wrong, I'll have to check that out. But uh, w what a place, what a place. So expect lots of industrial type shots coming out of this. And uh, I feel very privileged to be here. With it being a real, as you can see, blue sky day, some very harsh light, uh, I suspect there's going to be quite a lot of black and white going on here. Uh, but uh, anyway, I have the kind of shot you're probably going to expect. Well, actually, you probably don't yet because maybe you don't know the layout. We've got quite a few of these atomic storage huts spread around the place and as I think I've already said there's 56 of them 56 57 of them I'm being corrected and they're all kind of laid out in this array of kind of walkways and there's I don't know what 20 25 feet between them all something like that yeah just kind of starred out in these walkways and of course with these handrails and everything you can't ignore the leading lines of them so that's what we're shooting now I've got my long lens on here we're pretty much uh, at the widest section of it 40 mil which gives us an 80 mil equivalent yeah i probably really need to put a different lens on this to get a wider perspective in video mode you can see the kind of thing i'm after here but that changes the aspect so i'm going to come out of that and i'm just purely going to shoot this because it's really quite tight to this little bunker up ahead of me bunker's the wrong word of course but i'm just going to shoot that I'm gonna I'm hedging my bets and I'm being lazy in doing it so I'm gonna just stick this in a, an HDR bracket as well so I've got some things to play with on that notice the star on the door I do not know quite what that denotes uh, I imagine it's obviously got has to have something to do with what was stored in it originally but there we go Positions literally everywhere. Uh, I, I haven't moved from this area of these uh, the, these nuclear storage bunkers. I keep taking these glasses on and off. I'm sorry. I, I either can't see. I have to squint. I really. I know I squint a lot in videos anyway, uh, but I really have to here because that sun's so bright. Anyway, I'm waffling. Uh, something chronic. These bunkers are. are, are, are bun they're not bunkers. They're, they're, I think they call them rabbit hutches here. Uh, they're lovely, they're, so, they're just so structural, just appearing. And there's one through here, 
which if I turn then we're going to lose the uh, uh, lose the exposure because we're looking more into the sun you see what I mean no it's not so bad anyway just right away through there just peeking through the natural foliage that's grown up there it's a really lovely frame uh, for it I've got a really low uh, F number uh, on here and uh, yeah really technical not what I'm talking about F number open really wide open aperture uh, and uh, natural foliage creating a frame to that hope you like the shot in a very high security nuclear storage facility uh, this place had quite some security you can see the lookout tower up there which I hope to get into in a little while but right now it makes one heck of a photo so for this shot I'm taking the uh, aperture down to f3.2 so the building in the foreground which I'm only just kind of getting the the top third of is quite nicely out of focus there's so much light it might be worth me putting a uh, polarizer uh, over that but in honesty probably not really worth it. I mean the sun's in the right place and we're at 45 degrees of the sun so we can darken the sky but the sky's just blue in any case so uh, I can do all of that work in post rather than playing about with filters right now and yes there's an argument I suppose to getting it right in camera but or doing it all in camera but I'm not entirely certain I need to do that in this environment. Anyway um, there's the uh, there's the shot I hope you like it. If you do, click the like button. If uh, if you're enjoying this, um, click the like button. And if you uh, want to see more, click the subscribe button. And uh, also that tinkly little bell icon somewhere down at the bottom of the screen. Click that and you'll be told when I put new videos out as well. Well, one of these uh, rabbit hatches is uh, is open. In fact, a couple of them be open, but this one is in its well, obviously not original condition because in its original condition it contained uh, a lump of plutonium. <laughs> uh, but uh, I suppose it's as it's as original as you could expect it to be, and allow idiots like me into it. And well, heck. <laughs> Um, I mean, even if I don't get a good photograph of it, and I probably won't, I'm getting a photograph that, yeah, in here, I'm going to remember. Uh, I'm going to remember for a long while. So these uh, containers are, are, are lovely, and I'm going to get a couple of shots of these. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, well... I don't know what else to say. I, I, I kind of lost for words, which for you guys is probably a godsend. Have a look at some photos. Well, these are the containers that used to store the plutonium cores. These have been become from another RAF base. All of them at RAF Barnum were removed when the uh, RAF decommissioned it. There were A huts and B huts. A huts used to contain just one container. B huts had two, but they're not entirely certain why. This is the lighting switch gear inside one of the rabbit hutches. It looks incredibly over-engineered. Just a nice close-up of the lid. Millennium Falcon, anyone? 
You can see these handles in a number of places around the site. They commonly appear to be used in the doors to the hutches. And here we see it as part of the locking mechanism for one of the plutonium canisters. This is one of three large, huge buildings on the site that were used for holding the bomb components. This overhang at the front has got a gantry in it for the loading of the weapon. So this is a replica of the original bomb casing which is available to see on site. But I do stress this is not a public access site. It is privately owned and is used largely as an industrial site. I must thank Dibs McCullum for organising this photo trip. You can check out Dibs' YouTube channel in the links that I've put down below in the comments. Many thanks to Dibs for organising this, it was incredibly enjoyable. Take a look at some of the other videos on the channel, they're appearing on screen now. You can use the big circular button subscribe and uh, the thumbs up down below. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next week.